Hey everybody, welcome back. Today we are going to be doing Join the Odin Community. This is the section on the Odin Project. Working and collaborating with other people is an important part of working as a web developer. Therefore, we at the Odin Project encourage you to participate in our online chat community, which we'll talk about below. By joining this community, you can grow alongside the Odinites and help each other learn web development while you're at it. You can check out our Facebook page, follow us on Twitter, and catch up on Instagram. Hmm. I'm, I think that that's kind of a rabbit hole. I'm not sure why we'd want to do that. Use the Odin Project to share your Odin Project progress, updates, thoughts, and to see what other Odin students are up to. Hmm. Why a community is awesome for you. Learning uh, web development will be long and arduous journey, but you can make the marathon a lot more fun by getting involved in our Discord community. No matter what pace you're doing our curriculum, there will always be people a few steps ahead of you that are willing to help. Furthermore, helping others that are a few steps behind you is a great way to deepen your understanding and make your learning stick. When you're slogging through the desert of despair, and that's a link, so we can go to that. And I think this is what we were, yeah, this is what's been covered in a previous lesson. And it's basically just an idea about the emotional um, ups and downs you go through when learning a new th this skill. Uh, where your code doesn't work or even makes sense to you anymore, you can find an oasis of knowledge and encouragement in our community. Veterans at the Odin Project love to help fill in knowledge gaps and provide new insights, perspectives on how to improve your code. We've all been there before. Remember that project you struggled so hard to figure out that you're so proud of finishing through our community, you will get to share your work and progress with those who fully appreciate how much work went into it. Why a community is awesome for Odin. We are working hard to update existing lessons and produce new content, so we would love to hear your feedback on the lessons and projects. We hope you find the lessons fun, engaging, and informative, and find the projects challenging but achievable. So please help us know your thoughts. Before asking for help, as most of the projects are designed to push you to your limit, please remember that there is always community to turn to. You don't need to know how to solve every problem straight away, but you do need to have a general idea of where you are going. This becomes really important when asking your questions because sometimes the problem is your approach and not your code. If you're feeling stuck, it's a good time to pause and take a breath break the problem down into little pieces and then decide what is really holding you back. We call this technique the rubber duck debugging. Okay, so that's a link here. And it's basically is a method of debugging code by articulating a problem in spoken, written, natural language. Cool. This kind of goes back to what they were talking about earlier. <clears throat> but, yeah. Okay, so you should also do a Google search to find relevant information for your problem. Read about how to use Google to solve your programming questions. Now this is a link as well, so it goes to here. And this is a fairly long article. It's basically how to use Google to solve your programming, a general overview, narrowing the span, coding and flow, shared preferences key, using quotations as a way to get specific terms, that's the thing, a singleton. You don't want any results with singleton. You can exclude results with a a minus, <coughs> using image search with specific picture in mind. Cool. I kind of already knew that, so we won't cover that here. You can also look back at previous lessons for tools that you can apply to your current task. If these methods don't yield a solution for you, then it's time to reach out to, to the Odin community and ask for help. Asking for help. So you've spent some time struggling to solve the problem on your own, and now it's time to fire up the Odin Discord and ask help. Ask for help. This first thing to keep in mind is don't ask to ask. Cool, this looks like a website. Don't ask to ask. This is a short one, so we'll just read this. Don't ask to ask, just ask. <clears throat> Every now and then, in online chat rooms, I hang around and someone pops in and says something in the lines of, any Java experts around? This is a bad form for several reasons. What the person is actually asking here is, any Java experts around who are willing to commit into looking into my problem, whatever that may turn out to be even if it's not actually related to Java or if someone who doesn't know anything about Java could actually answer my question. There are plenty of reasons why people do, who do have knowledge would not admit to it. 
by asking, you're asking for more than what you're, you, you think you're asking. You're asking people to take responsibility. You're questioning people's confidence in their abilities. You're also unnecessarily walling other people out. I often answer questions related to languages or libraries I have never used because the answers are, in a program kind of way, common sense. Alternatively, it can be seen as, I have a question about Java, but I'm too lazy to actually formulate it in words unless there's someone on the channel who might be able to answer it, which is just lazy. If you're not willing to do the work to solve your problems, why should we? The solution is not to ask just to ask someone who is idling on the channel and only every now and then glances what's going on is unlikely to answer to your asking to ask question, but your actual problem description may pique their interest and get them to answer. So in summarize, don't ask any JavaScripts around or Java experts around, but rather ask, how do I do insert problem with Java and other uh, relevant information. Cool. So that's don't ask to ask. <clears throat> While this is a simple idea with a pretty catchy motto, it, it can help you get answers to your questions much faster and will make it easier to others to feel comfortable offering your help. In addition, when you ask your questions, you should help the community help you by putting together a great question. When asking your questions, remember to include the context. What do you think the problem is? What exactly do you want to happen? What is actually happening? How did you get there? And what have you tried so far? So these are a good list of questions to think about. If you can't pinpoint the problem, you can share a screenshot. This is especially useful for someone for showing the output of commands in the command line. In Discord, drag and drop your screenshot images, image files into the chat box to upload it or simply use print screen to paste keyboard shortcuts. If you don't know how to take a screenshot on your computer, this is a good time to ask Google. Okay, so on a Mac, Command Shift 4 gets you a box like this and you can take a screenshot like this. And I have it set to go to my desktop um, once it goes away from here. And then you'll have it here. So that's Command Shift 4, that'll get you your screenshots. Um, I think Command Shift 5 gives you another one. Cool, so with that, that one that gives you a box that you can move around. <clears throat> All right, so that's how to take screenshots. Screenshots are great for showing the output of commands or error messages in the command line. Screenshots are also great for showing the output from your code, such as how your output looks visually on a web page or console output in the browser. However, you should always include corresponding files containing the error. Even if it is a short amount of code, providing it in the Discord server is proper format along with a screenshot of the output is helpful for those debugging it rather than just a screenshot. When you do share a screenshot or the output of how it looks visually, make sure to push your project to GitHub or put your corresponding code in a REPL it, REPL it so that others can comb through and debug your code. So I'm pretty sure REPL it is a Okay, so what is this? Collaboration, IDE. Okay, yeah, this is basically, you can write any kind of programs in here. I think that they do all sorts of them. It's IDE, Integrated Development Environments. Um, cool, we're gonna keep moving for now. The screenshot of the output and the corresponding code can recreate the problem and help make it easier for to understand the problem for people helping you. You'll learn all about GitHub very soon. Sometimes there might be no one around to help you with the issue. That is the ideal time to get familiar with Discord search function. Okay, and so my guess is this is just a way to search in Discord. Search for that for specific keywords or error messages to see if anyone had a similar issue before they solved it. Formatting your questions. Asking your questions is a readable in a readable format helps anyone debug them later. Here are some ways to go about that. If you're having trouble on the command line, make sure to include both your input and error message you're getting. In the chat rooms, code can be displayed differently from a normal sentences by using backticks, which can be found on the tab key on US and UK keyboards. Backticks are not the same as single quotation marks, which are found on the left of the enter key. So yeah, this would show up as uh, it would have a code look to it. It has a different font and it's like gray background. Uh, for multiple lines of code, use three backticks on a separate line above. 
cool. So this is how to make those. Um, yeah, maybe I'll go back through here and give a demonstration of that once we get into Discord. You can also use code highlight to add um, color to your multi-line code, specifying the language. So here we've got JavaScript, multiple lines of color code. Cool, chat features. So you can do giphys, um, type exclamation mark or bang help for more information on chat commands. Show your app appreciation for those who help you with at username plus plus, and don't forget <coughs> to visit all the available rooms. How to help others uh, solve coding problems. Cool, so this is the next section is called how to help others solve coding problems. Not only is it important to know how to ask an effective question, it is also important to know how to help others effectively. Please take a moment to review these guidelines so that you will have proper expectations of the help you will receive in the Discord community. In addition, come back and review those guidelines when you are ready for to start helping others. Instead of answering the question, guide them to the answer. Unless the problem is a simple typo or a syntax error, it is more beneficial to guide them to find their own answer. This approach will teach good debugging skills and will increase their ability to solve future problems. Start by asking questions such as, what have you already tried? What do you expect this function to do? Or what do you think that the error means? <clears throat> Help only when you are certain of the answer. If you are not 100% certain of the answer, you may end up doing more harm than good. So please let someone else answer it. Do not worry about how long someone has to wait for an answer. The right answer is worth the wait. <clears throat> help only when no one else is currently helping. If somebody is already getting help, do not jump in the middle of the conversation. We know you mean well, but it is overwhelming for the person receiving help to follow multiple conversations. Help only when you have plenty of time. If you do not have much time to help, please let someone else answer the question. Uh, adjust your expectations to their level. If your question does not reveal where they are in the curriculum, ask them so that they can adjust their expectation to their knowledge level. Ask for clarification. <clears throat> if the question seems confusing or ambiguous, ask, more, ask for more clarity or politely link them to our bot command, X bang question, which links to the how to be great at asking questions article. <laughs> oh, cool. So I guess this command links directly to that article. Uh, ask for live code. If the question needs to have live code to fully un uh, understand or debug, ask them to use REPL it to provide it. If the problem is difficult to isolate, it should recreate the problem with isolated code. Do not answer Googleable questions. Learning how to reach research these questions is a very important skill for developers, so we need to empower them to find their own answers. When we answer the questions, it hinders their personal growth and it makes them codependent on our community. Instead of answering these questions, politely ask them to Google their question or use the bot command forward slash Google with search terms. Um, do not answer questions covered in our curriculum. If you know the answer is provided in our curriculum, ask them where they are in the curriculum. If they have not reached that portion of the curriculum, let them know that you, they will learn it in the future. If they have already been through that portion of the curriculum, politely direct to review the lesson. Answer questions before pointing out other problems. When helping someone, <coughs> it can be easy to spot other problems in their code. Resolve the original question before pointing out any other problems that need attention. Encourage students to use a debugger. It is common for students to not understand the importance of using a debugger to look at the values of their variables at different points in their program. When students are getting unexpected values, politely encourage them to use the debugger, debugger with our bot command, exclamation, or bang, debug. Which, watch for students that need to take a step back. It is common for students to focus too hard on a problem and not be able to see clearly. Then when this, when this situation arises, politely encourage them to step back from the problem and take a break. Oftentimes, stepping away from a problem will help them see the bigger picture and how to solve it. Watch the students that are in over their head. It is common for students to skip a lesson slash project or think that they know more than they actually do. When this situation arises, politely encourage them to go back and reread a section of the curriculum for more understanding. Admit when the problem goes beyond your current knowledge. It is common for the actual issue to go beyond the initial question. If it goes beyond your current knowledge, it is important that you admit that you are unsure of the correct answer and let someone else up. After digging deep into the problem, they might be able to continue troubleshooting 
on their own, or they can wait for someone uh, more experienced. Be patient. Helping others solve a problem is not easy. Remember to be patient as they struggle through the problem. Duck out of conversations if you get frustrated. Sometimes there are misunderstandings and interactions go poorly. You are a volunteer and are not obligated to help when things go out, get out of hand. Politely duck out of the conversation and let someone else step in. Cool. So now we've got our assignments. It looks like there's a handful of them. First, create a free GitHub account. As you discover, GitHub is an integral part of the developer workflow. Now, I already have a GitHub account, um, so, but this is what the login for GitHub will look like. You create a username, this and that. Um, so that's pretty straightforward for most people. I, th I believe if I go to GitHub right now, it'll go take me directly into the back end. So signing up for GitHub seems like fairly um, straightforward. So we won't go over that now. Um, two, now sign up for our Discord server. Pop in and say hello. Cool, we'll try that. We've created. Here we go. Accept invite. I don't think we need to do that, so I closed out of that. And in here we can go, hello, general off topics. Cool, and I think you can go, <clears throat> you can actually download an app that makes it so that I think you'll have a better interaction with it. So I just downloaded it, drive the Discord into here. Once it's there, Yeah, open, please. Cool, open up the Discord, I think. Cool, so I already had a Discord account, and so I was able to log into that. Okay, cool. Now I've got the Discord app open. I actually am a part of a different Discord. Uh, uh, cord group here but for now we can just click this plus button here <clears throat> and we can join a server and here I bet we could go the Odin project oh that's the link okay <clears throat> create my own so yeah join a server don't have an invite look for public ones um, and then so here we want to say the Odin project uh, oh, okay. That did not work. Join the server. Okay, so let's see if we can find invite. Did you get Discord connections? Oh, okay. Discord connections. See here, services. And then here we could look for connections. Oh, so yeah, d preferences. Let's see if these have connections here. Connections, right here. And it looks like you can link your Discord to your... Cool, so now I've linked my Discord and my GitHub. Now. If you haven't signed up for a GitHub profile, you won't be able to do this yet. So we'll um, wait, but you just did earlier in this video. So great. So now Discord is connected. Uh, I think we can log in via the GitHub login. And let's see, unclaimed account. Okay, so this is an unclaimed account. That was before I logged in, but now I'm on mine. And so uh, you can actually connect with me here. But now I want to add... This is cool. So I want to escape from preferences and we're still trying to find explore public servers. Odin. Uh, project. Mm -mm. Odin community. Retro handouts, body covers. Hmm. Discords. Now sign into your Discord server. Open, join Odin project. Oh, cool. Okay, so now that I had the app open, <clears throat> when I clicked that link, it linked me to the app, and the app read it in there. So I'll just look around for now. You must complete a few more steps before you can talk. Cool. 
Cool. So then it's a verify your phone number. I bet this will be different for everyone. So I'm just going to fast forward this one real quick. Okay. So I was not able to verify my phone number. And in order to get into the, in order to say something on the Odin project, you need to do that. I'm guessing that it's just a systems problem for them. So I'm going to, for now, I'm just going to demonstrate what you can do with this by in this, um, in just another discord. This one is for Pico CTF. It's kind of like learning how to be a hacker. Um, so we can go here and then we can just, uh, here we can uh, demonstrate what they were talking about in the uh, this section here. So cool, we've linked uh, GitHub and um, here are some gui guidelines before you d dive in. So <clears throat> they've got different things here. So here what we can, here are some guidelines. Ping, you can do at users so you can go at and then you'll see there's all these users show up and you guys could probably go independent Ian and then you would be able to ping me. Uh, don't bomb chats. Don't send multiple messages in a row. Type your whole message and then put one. So instead, yeah, they don't want you to write a ton of them. That's pretty straightforward. Um, don't exclude anyone, okay? Don't disappear right after asking for help on code. If you're posting a question, make sure you have time to stick around and discuss it. Remember the human. Behind every username, there is a person with feelings. Be kind. If you don't ask anything, if you don't have anything nice to say, don't say anything at all. If you wouldn't say it out loud, don't type it. Plain and simple. Read the rules and frequently ask questions upon joining. Okay. There's no additional resources for this one, um, but let's just go back through here and just make another, like a quick little um, backup of these things. So they had the Giphy there. So if you go slash Giphy, and then you could say whale or something like that. And you'd get a whale Giphy and you could click these and those will go into it. Um, they, this Because of, I'm, I haven't actually been able to get into the other one, it doesn't look like that actually does something. But if you did independent in plus plus, uh, I guess maybe that does something. It might do something in the actual one, but that's just what they're saying. That's what this is all about, the chat features. Okay, cool. So I'm going to close this for now. Uh, and um, cool. Yeah, we go back to the Odin project and we've completed this section. So market is complete and we'll head to the next lesson. Thanks for watching. We'll see you guys in the next video.